Uh, first of all, thanks for being here, you guys. This is, uh, this is exciting. Uh, what an awesome time of worship this is. And there's nothing that I love doing more than worshiping God. I can, I can tell you that. Uh, so today, uh, Rob and Tim talked about uh, Ephesians chapter 1. Did a great job, you guys. Uh, I'm going to break down uh, Ephesians 2. Verses 1 through 10, and really want to hit on one word in these 10 verses, grace. And I am I'm humbled by God's grace. Uh, Trey uh, told us we're going to, as a class, we're going to preach through the book of Ephesians and ask us if any, if any of us wanted to preach on a certain passage. And immediately I said, oh, Ephesians 2, 1 through 10, that is my life verse. I am so excited about this. And I thought about it for a second, and I said to myself, I don't, I don't think I really want to preach about that because it is, I'm going to get emotional. Uh, this, this passage hits home, and it should, it should hit home for all of you. Uh, none of our lives are exactly the same, but in some, some ways, our lives, we are all sinners. We are all dead. Uh, so yeah, whether you are a non-believer, never been to church before, like all of you here are feeling comfortable knowing you. Uh, you guys have been Christians, you're strong in your faith. Grace, this is something we all need to think and learn about. Uh, so, uh, Ephesians 2, 1 through 10, I'm gonna read the first three verses here. Um, it says, as for you, you were dead in your sins, your transgressions, when you followed the ways of this world, and of the ruler of the kingdom of the sky, the spirit that is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its thoughts and its desires. Like the rest, we are by objects, by nature objects of wrath. We are all dead to sin, dead because of sin. We are, by nature, objects of God's wrath. So, have a good day. <laughs> no, I, uh, <laughs> uh, no, I want to tell you a little bit about it, this guy, Grover. Uh, I've just known him as long as I can remember. Uh, he, uh, one of the early memories of this guy was he, uh, it, it was, uh, he was a pleaser. He just loved people, loved to make people happy, loved to laugh, have fun, that sort of thing. And I remember in elementary school, you could tell uh, he's one of those guys, and you might know people like this, uh, almost tried too hard to get people to like him, wanted desperately for that acceptance. Uh, there's something missing inside, you know, whether he's trying to, to, to be good at sports, or to uh, be good at school, or be funny, or wear the red clothes, whatever. Something's missing, he's trying too hard. Uh, and I remember distinctly in, in, in elementary school, start to tell lies. I mean, something didn't feel right. You start to tell a lie. If you kind of play a lie out, uh, not only does God tell us not to lie, but you have to remember the lie that you tell to somebody. And I might tell you a lie, and I might tell you a, a lie with a little different twist because I know that that same lie isn't going to appeal to you the same way it appealed to him. So now I've got to try to remember all the different lies that I've told to all of you, and that just kind of swells up and it becomes difficult. And you can just kind of see it weighing on him a little bit. So anyway, we're going to walk through Ephesians 2, 1 through 10. I'm going to read the whole passage here for you. Uh, As for you, you are dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world, and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature, and following his desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we are by nature objects of wrath. But... Because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms, in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is a gift of God, not by works that so no one can boast. 
For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, for which God prepared in advance for us to do. Now I've broken this passage down into five parts. Uh, there's going to be, first section is who we were, there's a section of who we are now, uh, what lies ahead for us, how did God do this, and why. So we're going to kind of break it down into these five sections. Uh, the first section, I'm actually just going to look at the first verse here. Uh, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. What is Paul talking about? Is this something he made up because he's, he's, a, he's a righteous dude? I mean, did he come up with this on his own? Uh, where does he get this? Well, I can tell you what it looks like. Um, actually, Rob, I don't know if you know this, I got a picture of you and I back when we were in high school. Uh, Rob, that right in the front here. Uh, and that's actually me behind him. In high school, I had a sweet mullet. You know, you see that? Okay. Anyway, that's, uh, that's all of us. And you know, it's kind of a funny picture, but it, there's some truth here. There's truth to the fact that if, if we aren't walking with Jesus, if we are not united with Jesus, we are the walking dead. We, we really, we don't know what we're doing. We're kind of walking aimlessly. 